What a fascinating passage of Scripture we have. Are your Bibles open to 2 Peter chapter 3, 1 to 18? We're going to go back to uh, verse 10 as an introduction to the section 11 to 18. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His, letter, his letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. What a reading. What a passage. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. That's just about enough information for the ABC to broadcast truly climate change. We're talking here in this passage about the coming of the Lord and the end of this age. I wonder how, how close we are to the end of this age. Uh, the scriptures tell us that uh, when you see the leaves coming on the fig tree, you know that summer's coming. And there are certainly events happening in our world today that would indicate that we are in the maybe latter days, maybe not the last days, I don't know. But Jesus said that in the last days, terrible times will come. In keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Who are the we? Who fits into the we are looking forward to the new heaven and a new earth? Only those who are born again. Only those who, whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life.
Remember in uh, Acts, what, Acts chapter 1, <clears throat> it tells us that uh, Jesus went up to heaven. And uh, he said, but uh, you'll receive power and uh, you've got a job to do. You've got to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And uh, then he went to heaven. And there were two, two men, two angels maybe, that uh, stood by the disciples when Jesus went to heaven. And he said, this same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you have seen him go into heaven. Surely we can look forward to that time when he will come back again. But let's see what Jesus himself had to say about this end of the age and his coming back. Remember the disciples were talking to him and they said to him, tell us, they said, what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Peter and Paul spoke about it, but what does Jesus say about it? And I find this one of the scariest passages in the word of God. Let us read just some of it in Matthew 24. What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus said, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that you be not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. We don't see that in Australia today, but they do in parts of the world. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. That hate is starting to come through in our country, isn't it? They're bringing in legislation on top of bad legislation in Victoria that will ban the scriptures. The media largely today hate Christians. Oh, they don't put it that way, but... Uh, they didn't treat Israel Folau very well, did they? Just because he quoted some scripture? You will be hated by all nations because of me. And then I find this sad. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. I think it's only in the last I would say 100 years anyway, less that the gospel has gone to all the world. I don't know that there are any people groups in the world today that haven't had contact with the gospel. Jesus said, for then, verse 21, for then there will be great distress, unequal from the beginning of the world until now. 
verse 29. Immediately after this, the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. They're Jesus' own words of what we've been reading in Second Peter. Terrible times will come, we read in Timothy. For your sake and for mine, uh, we've got enough material in this short passage in Peter to uh, keep us going for an hour or two. <laughs> I, I'm going to be brief. Our message today is very simple. Biblical Christianity is different from every other religion, philosophy, ideology, science, theory or hypothesis in the world today or at any other time in history. We have the on the screen. The next one, please. Only in the word of God, the Bible, do we read about the origin, the meaning, the morality, and the destiny of life. History in reality is his story. From creation to the babe of Bethlehem and into the future and the coming of the King of Kings, our Bible has been proven, well proven, to be a unique revelation from the sovereign Lord and creator of the universe. No document or any books or documents over the whole of history have been scrutinized and criticized and analyzed by scholars and scoundrels, many of whom whose lives have been changed because of it. The Bible is an amazing book. There's nothing to compare like our Bible. For instance, just take one topic alone. The over 300 prophecies concerning the first coming of Jesus. Over 300 prophecies, some of them written 700 years before he came. The incredible circumstances of his birth, life, death, resurrection, forecast and written to the very finest detail. What an amazing book we have. Thank you. Let's look for a first few moments at the origin of life. The Bible tells us in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and it was good. John, the disciple, spent a lot of time with Jesus, and he wrote, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Jesus was called the Logos or the Word, being the communication between God, the Father, through the Son in the triune Godhead. The communication between God and man. In the Bible, book of Hebrews 1, we read, God has spoken to us through his son, through whom he made the universe, sustaining all things by his powerful word. What a wonderful word is that sustaining. 
Even old, old Job, way back in history, said he suspends the earth over nothing. I've got a question for you. Have you ever spent a sleepless night wondering if the sun's going to come up next mo tomorrow morning? Or if the moon is going to maybe crash land in the next suburb? Our God not only made the world, but he is sustaining the world. Who else made all the laws that govern our world and the predictable maintenance of the whole universe? If your grandchildren or your children go to a government school, they'll learn about evolution. This is a mighty hoax. Charles Darwin, who promoted the stories that turned millions of people from trusting the sovereign Lord, before he died, he said he was wrong. I guess you've heard of David Attenborough and what wonderful films they produce. They really are. But who would believe he knows what took place 150 million years ago? I heard on a program just recently, he quoted something it only happened 450 million years ago. Let me say, I don't believe him. The curator of the great London Museum said, there is nothing in this museum to indicate one species changing to another. They haven't found the missing link and they never will. How can nothing develop into what we see and touch and investigate today. By the way, if you're ever talking to somebody who uh, follows the theory or hypothesis of evolution, ask them genuinely, can you tell us where life came from? There are sincere, educated sillies with a huge trust and faith in science. I've lived long enough to see that there are some amazingly wonderful things happen in science and they keep changing. But God said, I am the Lord, I change not. The Bible is a book of beginnings, the origin of everything and it was good the beginnings of life, and then came man and the beginning of sin. Then recording the mercy and God's forgiveness. And by the way, have you noticed that the Bible begins with a new heaven and a new earth? And it ends with a new heaven and a new earth. The origin, what about the meaning of life? The second of our two, our four headings. Why are you here? Why are we here? What's the purpose? What purpose is there in your life and mine? Are we just the same value as a tadpole in a frog pond? I note that Mr. Stalin and Mr. Hitler and Mr. Pol Pot and their many, many leaders like that, they rejected the Bible. They didn't believe in God. They believed in godless science and through their ideologies, Millions, millions of people have been killed and murdered. The Bible is primarily a warning of judgment and of God's unmeasurable love. The religions of the world are mostly people seeking and appeasing a God or gods. Biblical Christianity is God seeking mankind, just the opposite. 
any time you're talking to someone about religion and they say, oh, you're religious, you can honestly say, I don't believe in religion. Religion is man seeking after God. But biblical Christianity is God seeking mankind. It was God who so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes, and the word believe means to rely on and obey, whoever relies on and obeys him shall not perish but have everlasting life. There is nothing that you and I can do to save ourselves. We can't even save our children. The Bible says God, our Saviour, who wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. There is no other way. On the road to Gatton, driving out of Brisbane, there was a huge Baha'i sign along the roadside. And it said, one God, many ways to God. Are you listening? That billboard is a lie. I notice, you'll notice that I've used the phrase biblical Christianity. Dear friends, there are nice people, even in churches, where there is false teaching. Uh, and, and there are some people there who, like others in the Bible, where it was said, they did what was right in their own eyes. Some people take out of the Bible only what suits their human thinking. Some people, uh, I've noticed when we've had a, a good meal at the back here in the church, uh, we line up to all these beautiful dishes that are there and uh, we have a little bit of this one and we skip a couple and then we have another bit here and oh, I like that one, but I don't like that. I'll leave that. People treat the Bible like that. There are many people in Australia who use the Bible like we pick at a smorgasbord lunch. I've talked to nice people who believe there are various ways to be right with God and they can decide. Dear fellow believers, Jesus is the only baby ever born whose birth was not the beginning of his existence. Jesus is the only person whose death was not the end of his being. The leaders of all the other religions and all the other movements over all of history, they're all in tombs. They're dead. Dead. And one day, following resurrection, they'll kneel before the King of Kings. Brothers and sisters, every baby conceived is made in the image of God and has the potential to bring honour and joy to him as creator. Because of our inherited and our willful sin, God wants to forgive us and share in his love now and for eternity. The message to us from the Old Testament, from Jesus, the New Testament writers, is repent and be saved. Not believe about Jesus, but to trust and obey him. God has offered us his salvation free on his terms. But oh, what a cost. 
everyone, all have sinned and fallen short of the righteousness or right living that God prepared us for, the meaning of life. God has offered us his salvation free on his terms. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 put it clear and plain, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, so that no man can boast, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ to do good works, which God has prepared for us to do. Um, it's not my business, but I often feel like asking people, are you doing the work that God has given you gifts for? This tells us that the Creator has a plan for your life and mine with things to do. Provision and satisfaction guaranteed. And remember, God never asks for what he has not gifted you and me for. Thanks, people. The origins, the meaning of life, Morality. What do I mean by morality? Around the world, in the many nations, the ideologies, the religions, who sets the standards? Who makes the rules? Who makes the laws to say what is acceptable or not acceptable in that nation or people group? in the culture, in the communities and nations. Even, you know, you, you and I know that even the differences in a family can cause unhappiness. And the differences between nations can lead to war. Do you watch the TV news at all? How many countries in the world today are having serious riots and protests, action groups, friction. Jesus said in the last days of this age, there will be wars and rumours of wars around the world. We live in a fractured world. The Bible, this book, is God's word and authority for individuals, for families. It's God's word for communities, and nations. And please remember, we cross the sacred boundaries of God's divine laws to our sorrow. God's word is full of practical instructions for life. And his laws and guidance are for our good and the good of the nation. And if our government passes laws in conflict with God's laws, there will be consequences. Fellow Australians, watch this space. Have you ever seen changes in a person or a community when people follow the Lord? I've got time just for one that affected me. In the Sepik district of Papua New Guinea, in the late 50s and early 60s of the last century, the government did a census and found that over 85% of babies born died before they were five years of age over 85%. And then the South Sea Evangelical Mission moved into the area with a few missionaries from uh, different parts of the world. And uh, they preached the gospel. They were strong on evangelism. And a lot of people became Christians. 
They also had a little clinic, but they preached the gospel. And uh, I was there in 1963 when they did a survey of the area to find that less than 15% of babies born died before they were five years of age, down from over 85%. It was amazing. The uh, medical people couldn't believe what was happening. But uh, I could write a book on the lives of people that have changed. There are some that have changed from the guttermost to the uttermost. There are families much happier uh, because of people being converted in that family. People get peace with God now and saved from a future in hell to an eternity and future with the Lord. Wow, all this and heaven too. Our Australian nation laws were originally based on God's values, but now many people in Australia, our lawmakers, together with centres for learning, our universities and the persuasive media, they choose to reject the sovereign Lord of eternity, his grace and truth. Like the people of Noah's day, and the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, there will be consequences. It's been said, the reason we have today thousands of books on the law. We've got heaps and heaps of laws. And uh, it's because we don't follow the ten lines that were given to Moses way back in those olden days. We take away or we add to the instructions and truth of our creation, creator to our peril. And that's both personal and national. Thanks, people. The fourth topic, and we're getting to the end. Our fourth topic, the promised destiny destiny for all and everything at the end of this age just as at the first coming of Jesus there were a series of events so with his second coming when Jesus returns every eye shall see him and there will be a series of happenings stretching over many years some end time events are very clear. Some happenings are obscure to us now. But what remarkable evidences there are over the history of planet Earth to encourage us to trust the Lord. For instance, the fulfilled, fulfilled, fulfilled prophecy of past nations. And God said that nation will finish and it did we can go back over history as um, many do to uh, check up the bible is accurate in what it says in prophecy uh, I, I can only think of one nation or one part of a nation that really followed the Lord for a little while. Um, the uh, province of Mizoram in India, they were a heathen people. They, a uh, the, the very interesting history, but just a segment of, of what I've heard from uh, people who lived there. The whole nation, the whole province rather, not a nation, the whole province at one time turned to the Lord. And that little province of India sent out more missionaries than any other nation on the face of the earth per capita when they turned to the Lord. There's some very interesting history when we look in 
to what God has done. But in Africa today, many hundreds of Christians are being murdered. Their homes and their churches burnt. A pastor was asked about the picturesque and colourful language of the uh, Bible book of Revelation and his reply uh, when asked, I can't say that I understand it all, but this is sure. I'm so happy to know I'm on the winning side. Are you? Jesus clearly said to his friends, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you will be also. His unique death and resurrection were challenged, but well attested in history, there will be resurrection for all. The word perish does not mean annihilation. There will be resurrection for all. And we have a wonderful, wonderful promise. I say we, meaning those who are saved. I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered man's imagination what God has prepared for those who love him. Oh, excuse me. Praise the Lord. We are free to choose. By God's grace, we can have our destiny in wondrous glory with the Saviour or eternity in hell prepared for the devil and his angels. Jesus warns us about the narrow way with a few on it and the broad way with many on that road that leads to destruction. I want to repeat that Jesus and Paul and Peter warned there would be false teachers and also that there would be deceived churchgoers, people who would not be saved for eternity. Read the Bible. Mark it. Read your Bible often and mark it where it rings bells in your circumstances. And make sure that you, your family and your church have sound doctrine. We're told in the scriptures, if anyone chooses to do God's will, he shall find out. That's the work of God's spirit, the third person in the Trinity. Let's turn again to uh, our next section. Thank you, and Peter. What kind of people ought you to be? This is repeated again and again through Scripture. We are different by God's grace to the unsaved people in the world today. Our scriptures tell us, Peter tells us in this last section of his book, make every effort. Make every effort. That means costly hard work very often. In many churches across Australia even, there are sometimes very little difference between some members' lives and the godless people in the street. And indeed, Jesus warned there would be some church members not saved for eternity. That makes, that gives me a great deal of, of, of concern. I've noticed that in times of revival in the past, the Holy Spirit seems to change some lives very quickly and they, when they repented and accepted Jesus and were saved. But for all, making every effort may mean our habits, our goals, our diet, our holidays, our reading material, 
our TV programs. Make every effort, Paul Peter says. It takes effort to save on our spending, to support a missionary if we can't go ourselves. And the Bible says, be on your guard. Be on your guard. Discernment is about as popular today as absolute truth and honesty. Let me say that again. Discernment is about as popular today as absolute truth and honesty. I know as Christians we're not to be critical, but we do need discernment. We're warned about false teaching. We need to be dis very discerning there. And we're told in Peter here, grow in grace. Grow in grace. Oh, you know, there are some people that aren't happy unless they're miserable. I've got friends like that. Dealing with a person I've spent hours writing letters to at the present time. And they can only see misery. They say they're a Christian, but oh, not a letter comes, not a email comes, but there's a, 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 a something that shouldn't be written. Grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can't do that without the Bible. The Bible says, be on your guard, grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If I'm speaking today to somebody who's not an older Christian with experiences, read your Bible. There are parts that are difficult to understand. Don't let that worry you at all. Keep reading your Bible and uh, mark it where there's something that applies to your life or something that fits the circumstances that you're going through. Read your Bible through and through and through. I wonder, <clears throat> wouldn't it be interesting to, to know from our congregation here today how many times everybody has read through the Bible? 10, 15 times? It's God's word and there is nothing like it. We cannot grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord if we don't keep reading his word. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you that we can know you and you can guide us in our life. We thank you that we have the confidence of trusting you for salvation. You have the answer for the origin, the meaning of our lives, the laws and rules that govern our life, and you have prepared a home in heaven for us. We thank you for your grace Touch our lives where we need your help. Amen. Thanks.